Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com in today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we looked at the producer price index, an indicator which gives us insight into the producer price pressure side of the equation. In today's lesson we're going to look at the consumer side of the equation with another indicator referred to as the consumer price index. So let's get started. Released at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on approximately the 15th of each month, the Consumer Price Index is a measure of the changes in prices paid by urban consumers for a fix, fixed basket of goods and services. Where the Producer Price Index, which we learned about in our last lesson, measures the increase or decrease in the price producers receive for their goods, the Consumer Price Index measures uh, the price that consumers pay for those goods. So the question that naturally arises when hearing this is, wouldn't those two numbers be the same or at least move in tandem with one another? Uh, and the answer to that question is not, uh, not necessarily for the following reasons. Uh, number one is the PPI is designed to measure the entire uh, marketed output of U.S. producers, which includes goods and services purchased by other producers. The CPI, on the other hand, includes only goods purchased by consumers. Okay. Uh, number two is that imports are excluded from PPI but included in the CPI. And then number three is uh, taxes paid as part of the purchasing price by the consumer are included uh, in the uh, CPI but not in the PPI. Okay. So the important thing to understand here is that while changes in PPI are normally looked at as having a predictive power as to changes in the uh, consumer price index or CPI, a rise or fall in the, C in the PPI does not necessarily mean this, uh, you know, that the same rise or fall in the CPI is coming. Um, as this is the case, uh, and as the CPI is the end price paid by the consumer, uh, it's this number that best represents the level of inflation in the U.S. economy. And one of the things, uh, if you've been following the news recently, that's uh, you know that there's been some talk about here is that. Uh, producers are not actually um, being able to pass a lot of the price increases that they're uh, getting uh, along to the consumer and you're seeing things like restaurants switching out uh, different ingredients and stuff to uh, you know try and avoid passing those price increases along to uh, to uh, the consumer with some of the commodity prices rising so so uh, dr drastically in the recent uh, past um, in addition to showing fluctuations in price from different areas of the country, the CPI also shows the fluctuation in price for different groups of products such as housing, transportation, medical care, etc. Um, this allows traders to see not only the price fl fluctuations of the overall economy, uh, uh, overall economy uh, but like the PPI for different areas of the economy, so where consumers are getting hit with the most price increases or where the, where the most price fluctuations are throughout the country. Um, there are two main CPI numbers reported, which are the CPI for urban wage uh, earners and clerical workers, called the CPIW, and the CPI for all urban consumers, which would include things like retirees, etc. Uh, and this is the CPIU that's called, um, which basically give two separate numbers for price increases, um, like I say, you know, experienced by working people, and then uh, price in increases experienced by all consumers. As with the PPI, the consumer price index is also presented without uh, volatile food and energy included. And this core CPI number, or the CPIU minus food and energy price increases, uh, is the most widely followed number. And that's the number that you normally hear reported uh, when people refer to the CPI. So as we've learned in previous lessons, the level of inflation in the economy has a huge effect on the market. So the CPI is the, you know, as the CPI is the primary measure of inflation, fluctuations in this number can create large market volatility as well. Um, as with all the other indicators we're studying as well, um, the market's going to react differently to the number depending on what it's focused on at the time. So the best way to learn how to anticipate the market reaction under different scenarios with this number uh, is to follow several releases in real time. So with, as with uh, many of the other indicators, uh, and with this in mind, I'm going to be posting a discussion starter in the comments section of this lesson on informtrades.com after the next release. 
release. Um, so if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can find a link to that lesson in the description section of the video. Um, I've also included a link to the latest report, which you can find below this video if you're watching uh, the video on informtrades.com or in the description section if you're watching on YouTube. So that's our lesson for today. In our next lesson, we're going to take a uh, look at another indicator uh, which has ramifications on both price and growth in the economy, uh, existing home sales. So we hope to see you in that lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And good luck with your trading.